some exciting news now, because scientists say they've found a planet orbiting the closest star outside our solar system. And they say Proxima b, which is about four light years away, is a rocky globe that could have enough surface water to support life. Here's our science editor, David Shukman. In the dazzling beauty of the skies above Chile, telescopes have focused on the pinprick of light coming from our closest star, and they've made a stunning discovery. They found an alien world orbiting around it. This is an artist's impression. No one's seen the planet directly, but researchers know it's there because of tiny movements in the star. It's a huge moment in the exploration of space. This is the nearest planet that potentially um, can have life and can, have, um, can be, in a sense, similar to our own planet. So I think that, that that's a big discovery. There, there are hundreds of planets being discovered now every month, but this is a really special one. That's the nearest one. This, will ha this happened once, will not happen again. It's hard to grasp distance in space and where this newly found planet actually is. So let's start with the moon. That's 239,000 miles from us. Further out, there's Pluto. Now that's 4.6 billion miles away. But gaze beyond our solar system to the next nearest star, Proxima Centauri, and that's 24 trillion miles away, which sounds a lot, but in space terms, it's our neighbor. That's where a planet has been discovered, orbiting around it. And the reason scientists are so excited is that this alien world is the closest there is outside our own solar system. It's been called Proxima b. It's slightly larger than Earth, and although its star is much cooler than our sun, the planet is in just the right zone for liquid water to exist on its surface. And that means that in theory, it could support life. Telescopes around the world will now be deployed to find out more. This really changes, I think, our perception of how many habitable planets there are in the galaxy. And it means that the prospects for alien life elsewhere in the galaxy look a lot more rosy than they did you know, last week. Reaching the planet with the spacecraft we have now would take tens of thousands of years. There is a plan, backed by Stephen Hawking, for far more rapid forms of space travel. And that project now has a tangible goal to aim for. In the meantime, it'll be astronomers who will hunt for clues about our nearest neighbor in deep space. The clearest images of Proxima just came through, and what they reveal is simply breathtaking. And the new planet. Scientists excited tonight about a new Earth-like planet found circling the star that is nearest to our sun. An artist's rendering tonight of what it might look like. They say the planet may have water and ocean, Scientists calling the discovery, quote, rocky landscapes, hints of liquid water, and perhaps even signs of something beyond our understanding. James Webb has outdone itself this time, capturing stunning views of this nearby superstar that's only four light years away. Tune in because what we've just seen could change everything, and it's only the beginning. Life's possible. Twilight Zone. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf. It's packed with energy. These stars can keep burning for trillions of years, trillions. But Proxima Centauri is also a flare star, meaning it's unpredictable. It might send out bursts of energy that could totally mess with anything trying to live on Proxima b. Whether or not the star can keep its planet habitable is still up for debate. But lurking beneath the surface is a secret about Proxima b, one that could rewrite everything we know about survival under such a volatile star. This planet has a sibling to Proxima Centauri, SE, also orbiting this little red dwarf. It's filed, and scientists only found it recently by looking at some old Hubble data. There might even be another companion, something smaller, hanging around there. They call it Proxima Centauri D. If it confirmed, this place just keeps surprising us. And who knows what's next? Rings, moons, life. With every new snapshot that comes back from Webb, we're getting a new window into this world. And it's not just pictures. This telescope is picking up details we never could have imagined before. From frozen gases to possible atmospheres to hints of who knows what on the surface. Webb has even caught a glimpse of a red dwarf star nearby, surrounded by dust, dust that might one day form new planets. It's truly amazing stuff. There's so much more out there waiting to be found. We barely scratch the surface when it comes to understanding exoplanets. Maybe one day, we'll be able to point a telescope at this planet and see actual signs of life or even evidence of civilizations. 
Maybe we'll pick up more of those mysterious signals, and this time they'll turn out to be something artificial. If there's one thing this planet has taught us, it's that space is wild. It's full of surprises, and even our closest neighbors are weirder and more wonderful than we could have imagined. The universe is waiting, and the more we look, the more we find. Maybe this planet will turn out to be just another rock, or maybe it will be the key to finding life beyond Earth. Either way, it's one heck of a journey, and we're just getting started. The Alpha Centauri system, with Proxima Centauri being the closest star to us, has always intrigued scientists. The fact that it is a mere four light years away means that, in the grand scheme of the cosmos, it is practically our neighbor. This planet, being one and a half times the size of Earth, has stirred imaginations worldwide. Could it be an alternate Earth, one with oceans, rivers, and possibly even life forms unknown to us? One of the fascinating aspects of this planet is its potential for tidal locking. Tidal locking means that one side of the planet always faces its star, while the other side remains in perpetual darkness. This creates extreme conditions. One side might be scorching hot, while the other is frozen. In between, there could be a twilight zone, a region with more moderate temperatures where life might have a chance to survive. This concept has been a popular theme in science fiction. We are seeing real planets where these conditions could exist. Traveling to this planet is a whole other challenge. Current technology makes it virtually impossible to reach even our closest stellar neighbor in a human lifetime. Voyager, for instance, is moving at around 38,000 miles per hour, but at that speed, it would still take over 200,000 years to reach this planet. Concepts like solar sails, which use a pressure of light to propel a spacecraft, might reduce the travel time to a few decades, but we are still far from achieving that kind of technology for crewed missions. Despite the obstacles, there are projects being proposed that could bring us closer to interstellar travel. Breakthrough Starshot, for example, aims to send tiny, lightweight probes to Alpha Centauri at a significant fraction of the speed of light. These probes, propelled by powerful lasers, could make the journey in about 20 years. They wouldn't carry people, but they could send back valuable data and images, giving us our first close-up look at another star system. Now that we know about Proxima, the next question is, how can we get there? A flare star's unpredictable impact adds to the mystery. We have entered an exciting era of discovery, one where new planets are being found almost every day. The James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories are helping us map out these distant worlds, bringing us closer to answering the age-old question of whether we are alone in the universe. With each new discovery, we get a little closer to understanding the cosmos and our place in it. This planet might be just another rock, or it might be the key to finding life beyond Earth. Either way, the journey to uncover its secrets is just beginning. For scientists, though, this extreme environment is exactly what makes this planet interesting. It's a test case for future technology. If we can figure out how to make energy systems work there, we could probably do it anywhere. The James Webb Telescope's new images and data let us peek into what's really going on with this planet, its atmosphere, surface, and how it deals with all the chaos from its star. It's like getting a survival guide for the most extreme camping trip imaginable. Now, let's talk about solar power. The star Proxima Centauri is dimmer than our sun, but it makes up for it with bursts of intense radiation. Imagine trying to set up solar panels there. You'd have to design them to take the hits and keep on going. If we could crack that code, we'd have solar tech that could survive anything Earth throws at it. Deserts, polar regions, you name it, maybe even the aftermath of a natural disaster. That's a pretty big deal, especially since our current solar tech struggles when conditions get too tough. One cool idea is setting up solar panels along what's called the Terminator line on this planet. If the planet is tidally locked, meaning one side always faces a star while the other side is stuck in perpetual darkness, this line would be like the twilight zone, literally. You'd have one side boiling and the other freezing, and in between, there's this narrow strip where conditions might be just right. Solar panels along that line could gather energy from both the lit and shaded parts, making the most out of a tough situation. It's like squeezing every bit of juice out of a half-dead battery. The James Webb Telescope also helps by giving us clues about the atmosphere. If this planet even has one left, those flares from Proxima Centauri could easily strip it away. But if there's anything still hanging around, Webb's got the tools to find out. Knowing what's in the atmosphere could tell us a lot about how energy moves around the planet. 
Maybe there's some unusual greenhouse effect happening. Or maybe there are reflective particles that change how sunlight spreads out. All of this helps us imagine what kind of technology could actually work there. Beyond solar power, this planet also makes us think about energy storage. Imagine trying to keep power running on the sun, or in this case, the red dwarf, just as it decides to take a break. Or go wild. You need some serious batteries, something that can store energy through those flare-ups and keep things running during downtime. On Earth, this means we'd need batteries that can handle extreme conditions, maybe solid state or even next-gen capacitors that can deal with big ups and downs. If we figure this out, we could improve how we use renewable energy here, making it more reliable and resilient. Traveling to this planet? Not happening anytime soon, but just thinking about it pushes us to get creative with energy tech. We need a way to travel for light years without traditional fuel. Enter solar sails, those massive reflective sheets that use light particles to move through space. It's like catching the wind, except the wind is made of sunlight. Not only could these sails get a spacecraft moving without using tons of fuel, but they could also collect energy along the way. Imagine powering a spaceship just by cruising through starlight. Pretty sci-fi, but maybe possible. And what about resources on this planet? We don't have any proof yet, but it's possible there are valuable minerals there, maybe even something that could revolutionize energy tech, like rare isotopes or superconducting materials. Of course, even if we found something incredible, there's an ethical question here. Do we really want to start mining other planets? Space isn't exactly the Wild West, and we need to think carefully about how we handle exploration and resource use. The last thing we need is an interstellar land grab. Exploring how to reach Proxima B pushes us to rethink how we use energy here on Earth. Extreme Energy Tech From Proxima B to Earth, another big idea inspired by this planet is fusion energy. Those intense flares and all the energy flying around between Proxima Centauri and its planet give us a chance to learn more about plasma physics. If we could harness that kind of power here on Earth, fusion could become a reality. Clean, almost limitless energy that doesn't rely on fossil fuels. It's the ultimate dream for energy scientists, and studying extreme places like this planet might bring us one step closer to making it happen. The technology we need for this planet could change things here on Earth too. Imagine power systems that keep working no matter how bad the conditions get. That's something that could help everything from airplanes to telecommunications. Better batteries and thermal management systems could make our power grids more reliable, even when the weather gets extreme. Autonomous energy networks, designed to run without human intervention, could help bring power to remote places that don't have reliable access right now. If we're serious about going to places like Mars or back to the moon, figuring out energy on the planet is part of the puzzle. We need systems that can create their own power, use local resources, and keep working long term. This planet is like a testing ground for those ideas, from small nuclear reactors to technology that turns local rock or ice into fuel or power. The James Webb Telescope is helping us get the data we need to make that happen, showing us what conditions are really like out there. This planet isn't just some far off world, it's a symbol of what's possible when we push the limits of what we know. The James Webb Space Telescope is giving us a look at a place that's harsh, unpredictable, and full of challenges. But that's exactly what makes it worth studying. The lessons we learn from this planet could change how we use energy here on Earth, make future space missions possible and help us build a more connected, sustainable world. Who knew that a rocky, flare-blasted exoplanet could end up being one of our best teachers? To really understand what's happening on this planet, let's get into even more details. For one, the star Proxima Centauri has a habit of blasting this planet with flares that are over 100 times more intense than the flares our sun releases. These bursts are packed with ultraviolet and X-ray radiation. On Earth, our magnetic field and atmosphere protect us from harmful radiation, but on this planet, the situation could be a lot different. If it doesn't have a magnetic field, or if it is only a weak one, the constant radiation from its star could strip away its atmosphere, making it a challenge for any potential life to survive. This brings us to an interesting thought. If this planet still has any atmosphere left, it's probably not like the air we breathe. James Webb's data will give us a chance to find out exactly what's happening there. We could discover a mix of gases that might tell us whether the planet once had a thick, Earth-like atmosphere or if it's been reduced to a thin, hostile shell. 
This kind of information could help us learn more about how planets evolve around stars like Proxima Centauri and how harsh stellar environments shape their atmospheres over time. The concept of the habitable zone is always an interesting one. This planet lies in that special region around Proxima Centauri where temperatures might allow liquid water to exist if all other conditions are right. The habitable zone is sometimes called a Goldilocks zone because it's neither too hot nor too cold, theoretically making it just right for life. But with Proxima Centauri's constant flays, there's more to the story. Even if water could exist, those intense radiation storms might make it tough for anything more complex than simple microbes to survive. Yet, this doesn't mean it's impossible. There could be some surface pockets of water that stay protected from radiation, or perhaps a thick atmosphere could offer some shielding. When we think about what energy solutions might work on this planet, the first thing that comes to mind is adaptability. Any technology developed for this planet would need to adapt to wildly changing conditions. Solar panels, for instance, would need to handle not just variability in light levels, but also the massive surges of radiation that come with stellar flays. This might mean building photovoltaic systems with advanced shielding or materials that can self-repair after radiation damage. These innovations would have practical uses here on Earth as well, especially in areas prone to extreme weather or radiation, like deserts or regions hit by natural disasters. Another challenge for solar power on this planet is its star's unique light spectrum. Proxima Centauri is much dimmer and redder than our sun, so any solar panels would need to be optimized to collect infrared light instead of visible light. Current solar cells are mostly designed to capture visible and ultraviolet light, but adapting them to collect more infrared light can increase their efficiency, not just for this planet, but also for applications on Earth. In fact, infrared-optimized solar panels could be especially useful in lower light environments, making solar energy more viable in places where traditional panels aren't as effective. Energy storage is just as crucial as energy generation, especially when dealing with a star as unpredictable as Proxima Centauri. Imagine you're relying on solar power, and suddenly the star throws out a flare so powerful that it temporarily knocks out your energy collectors. You'd need a backup, a way to store energy during calmer periods that could get you through the rough times. Scientists are already looking at solutions like solid-state batteries, which are safer and more efficient than today's lithium-ion versions. On this planet, you need a battery that doesn't just store energy, but can also endure the intense radiation and temperature swings. Breakthroughs in battery technology for this planet could directly lead to better energy storage solutions on Earth, helping make renewable energy more practical and stable. The constant bombardment of radiation from Proxima Centauri means we'd also have to rethink materials for infrastructure. Traditional materials wouldn't last long under such conditions. Instead, we need to develop radiation-resistant materials, metals or composites that could hold up against both high-energy particles and constant temperature shifts. These kinds of materials could have valuable applications on Earth, especially in industries like aerospace, where resilience to extreme conditions is crucial. And then there's the idea of wind power. Though it might not be quite what you imagine, if this planet has any sort of atmosphere left, there could be strong winds caused by the stark temperature differences between the day and night sides. Harvesting wind energy on this planet would involve developing turbines capable of handling not only powerful gusts, but also the unpredictable nature of an atmosphere shaped by intense stellar flays. Advances in wind technology for this planet could help create more efficient turbines on Earth, particularly for offshore wind farms, where conditions can be challenging. Beyond energy, this planet is prompting us to rethink life support systems. Any attempt to establish a presence that would require not just energy, but also protection from radiation and extreme temperatures. Creating habitats on this planet would mean developing shielding that can block out harmful radiation while also keeping temperatures stable. Advanced insulation materials, radiation-blocking domes, and underground habitats are all concepts that could come into play. These ideas aren't just science fiction. They could influence how we design habitats for other worlds like Mars or even extreme environments on Earth. This planet's extreme conditions could also help us rethink how we grow food in space. If humans were ever to settle there, they'd need a reliable food supply, and traditional farming wouldn't be an option. Instead, we'd need to turn to techniques like hydroponics or even lab-grown food that can be cultivated in tightly controlled environments. Innovations in agriculture for this planet could lead to breakthroughs in food production on Earth, particularly in urban areas where space is limited or in regions that can't support traditional farming. 
could Proxima be be humanity's future home, or just another uninhabitable rock in the vastness of space? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.